Hey everyone, it's Prude189, and today is a very special day. Yep, it's my birthday. On March 4th, 29 years ago, I was born, and I want to celebrate by making this video. But before we dive into that, I want to mention that if you enjoy my YouTube videos and want to support me, please subscribe to my podcast channel, where I interview famous authors and tabletop creators. It would mean a lot. It'd be a great birthday present. Anyway, today we're going to be talking about The Lord of the Rings, or more accurately, Tolkien's Legendarium. If you're a casual fan of Lord of the Rings, you might be aware of various spirits and demons like Sauron and the Balrog within the story. The Wizards of Middle-earth, believe it or not, are of the same species or class of beings themselves. These beings are what we call Maiar, or what we might think of as angels. They are of the Ainur, on the lower rung of the totem pole. There are also beings of Ainur above them, known as the Valar, who are the gods or archangels of Middle-earth. They play a large part in Tolkien's works like the Silmarillion and Morgoth's Ring, but we won't go too far into that. The point of today's video is, to, is tackling the notion of how powerful these beings really are and if any mortal can defeat them in combat. By mortal, I am going to include the elves, as they can still die from means other than age. Can they beat them in combat? Can a mortal, or one of the free peoples of Middle-earth, defeat an Ainur in combat? And that is a very complicated answer. There's a lot of layers to it. Don't worry, by the end of the video I will give it to you, but let's explore each side of the yes and no to get a clear picture. First, we'll go into Gandalf's account on meeting the Balrog. A lot of fans consider Ainur to be beyond mortal strength because of Gandalf's line in both the book and the movie version of The Fellowship of the Ring. What is this new devilry? A foe beyond any of you, meaning supposedly non Ainur or mortals. It's also noteworthy that Legolas, throughout the entirety of the books, is never truly frightened of anything except the Balrog. But is this a hard rule, or is this something Gandalf would wisely tell them so they wouldn't throw away their lives meaninglessly? Even if a mortal could fight a Balrog, the demon would still be far too dangerous to test your luck on it. Gandalf describes how terrifying it was to face the Balrog in the mine before the Bridge of Khazad-dûm. I'll read a passage here, from the Fellowship of the Ring. I am very weary. I must rest here a moment, even if all the orcs ever spawned are after us. Gimli took his arm and helped him down to his seat on the step. What happened away up there at the door? he asked. Did you meet the beater of the drums? I do not know, answered Gandalf, but I found myself suddenly faced by something that I have not met before. I could think of nothing to do but to try and put a sh shedding spell on the door. I know many, but to do things of that kind rightly requires time, and even then the door can be broken by strength. As I stood there I could hear orc voices on the other side. At any moment I thought they would burst it open. I could not hear what was said. They all seemed to be talking in their own hideous language. All I caught was gosh that is fire. Then something came into the chamber. I felt it through the door, and the orcs themselves were afraid and fell silent. It laid hold of the iron ring, and then it perceived me and my spell. What it was I cannot guess, but I have never felt such a challenge. The counter spell was terrible. It nearly broke me. For an instant the door left my control and began to open. I had to speak a word of command. That proved too great a strain. The door burst into pieces. Something dark as a cloud was blocking out all of the light inside, and I was thrown backwards down the stairs. All the wall gave way, and the roof of the chamber as well, I think. I am afraid Balin is buried deep, and maybe something else is buried there too. And that was obviously before Gandalf realized that he was facing a Balrog. And yet, despite the Balrog's terrifying power, there have been others that have fought Balrogs before. Granted. Everyone who has fought a Balrog before in single combat has died in the attempt, but they have been able to slay them as well in the process, even mortals like the elves. 
though you'll notice that every elf that has fought against an Ainur has been of the Calaquendi, meaning that they have seen the light of the trees, meaning the trees in Valinor, and have met the Valar themselves. Having seen the light of Valinor, they are called the Light Elves. Now, this doesn't mean that every Light Elf can beat any other type of elf, like a Sindar Elf in battle, but many Calaquendis are noted for their power. Most powerful Elf Lords that we know of are of their ilk, like Elrond, Galadriel, uh, Celeborn. Glorfindel, one of the most powerful Elf Lords, fell at the fall of Gondolin during a duel with the Balrog where they slew one another. The very same Glorfindel who was resurrected and sent back to Middle-earth during the Third Age. But the question remains, can a man, hobbit, or dwarf kill or defeat a Maiar? Or even a Mori Quindi Elf, which are the ones that have never left Middle-earth during the time of the trees, like Legolas and his kindred? Well, the best and probably the most well-known example is in front of everyone's eyes. Isildur, son of Elendil, cut the ring from Sauron's hand after he was felled following a fierce duel where Sauron fought Elendil and Gilgalad, all three dying from the fight. Or at least, Sauron was defeated during the fight. It's unclear exactly what happened during the battle, but Elendil and Gilgalad defeated Sauron, and as Sauron lay there upon the ground, Isildur himself felled the Maya by cutting his hand and taking the ring. Now, Sauron didn't die permanently, but he was defeated. No Valar or Maiar can permanently die unless killed by Eru Iluvatar or possibly another Valar. But we're talking about defeating, and it is possible. But again, not very likely. And there is an argument to be made that they cannot be harmed by mortals with weapons that do not have a special or magical quality to them. Elendil, a mortal man, even though he is of one, one of the Numenorians, was wielding Narsil, as Gilgalad was one of the Noldor who are of the Calaquendi. So they both had a special property to them that allowed them to have the opportunity to harm Sauron. And perhaps that's why they sought him out in combat. Even Isildur, who finished off the defeated Sauron, cut his hand with a broken Narsil. But there's also another aspect people don't often talk about. Sauron was able to change shape, or lose his shape at any time until after the fall of Numenor and the last alliance of elves and men. Not only that, but there was another fight in the Legendarium where a mortal, albeit a Calaquendi, fought against an Ainur. The Noldor High King Fingolfin fought Morgoth himself in a duel, and nearly won, giving Morgoth permanent injuries that would harm and anger him forever. Fingolfin, an elf who has seen the light of the trees, but an elf nonetheless, essentially fought the Dark Lord of the Earth, the one mightier than his servant Sauron. That's right, Morgoth, if you didn't know, is the boss of Sauron. This is an achievement even above Gandalf and Glorfindel's fights against the Balrogs, or the duel that ended Sauron's reign in the Second Age. And here is the kicker. Morgoth, who was Melkor, also lost his ability to lose his physical form or to change shape after a certain point, and became locked in his mortal form. Now, whether Balrogs are locked in their forms is up for speculation, but for argument's sake, let's say they are. That brings us to the next part of the video. Dragons. Now, don't run off. I know the debate on whether dragons are Maiar or not rages, and if you're firmly in the camp of them not being them, at least hear me out. We do know that dragons are, on some level, physical beast and a creation of Arda itself. However, back during the Ainulindale, when Morgoth first drew other Ainur to his rebellious cause, we know there are many of them that joined him. However, we only ever see the Balrogs, Ungoliant, and Sauron on his side. However, there are also the werewolves, embodied Ainurian spirits that inhabit the bodies of great wolves, very similar to how Morgoth created the dragons in his dungeon of Atumno where the dragons were bred. My contention is that he housed Maiar spirits and hybridized them into the bodies of these great beasts that he bred to create something that can not only be killed by a mortal, like any Maiar that is locked in a physical form, but being Maiar, they can still contend with other Maiar and Ainur. Like during the last great battle of the War of Wrath, where Encalagon and his dragons drove back the Valar themselves for a time. So. So far, we have established that an Ainur, embodied or not, cannot be truly killed by a mortal. However, mortals with special weapons could harm them and defeat them. One last example is during the Battle of Unnumbered Tears. During the battle, the dwarves of Belagost saved the day and held the dragons at bay during the fight, as Aule, or Eul as I call them, made them more resistant to weariness and the magic of the enemy, which I would argue would include dragon fire. Their natural resistance, along with their special helms that staved off the rest of the fire's effects and hel helped to protect them during the battle, and their axes were so keen that they harmed even dragon scales. 
Azagal, the king of the host, was noted to have severely harmed Glaurong, who was the father of all dragons, during the fight. And you might say that Glaurong was special, but Azagal's dagger that he used to harm him was made by the dwarf Telkar, who made Narsil that Elendil wielded, that would eventually be wielded by Aragorn. This also lets you know that dwarves are capable of making special weapons that can harm the Ainur. The dwarves that were slain in Moria by the Balrogs were driven out just as the dwarves from the Lonely Mountain were driven out by Smaug, not because they couldn't fight them, but because they were caught unawares and unprepared, unlike in the Battle of Unnumbered Tears where they showed up to be the rear guard. But what does all this mean in conclusion? Well, in any contest, an Ainur is a dangerous opponent. No Meyer has ever been defeated in combat without their opponent or many others also perishing, save for a few of the lesser drakes like Skatha. Sauron, Glaurong, every Balrog that has, been, that has fought in combat, Gandalf himself, and only one Valar has ever fought against a mortal, Morgoth, and while Fingolfin harmed him, he still was not able to defeat Morgoth. In fact, Morgoth was much diminished by that time his power having been drained out of him to create his dark creatures like orcs and dragons, much like how Sauron's power was fueled into the One Ring. So by the time he fought, fought Fingolfin, he was very much lesser and weakened than when he was first created by er Eru Iluvatar. So, you are probably going to die if you fight an Ainur no matter what. However, if you are a Calaquendi, or if you or any other mortal that has a special weapon, or you're fighting a Maiar that is severely underpowered and or locked into a physical form, you can potentially defeat them in single combat, though you will die in the attempt in all probability. So, glad we got that settled. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, liking this video really helps me out, but again, what would be the best thing for you to do is to subscribe to my podcast channel if you really wanted to help me out today, and of course if you want to subscribe to this channel. I'm not going to argue against that either. All right, guys. Thanks so much for listening to the video, and I hope you all have a good one. Thanks.